Can somebody tell me why Bravo has Brow thicker than water back? Like, I don't understand. It wasn't all that good when it first came on last year. It's damn sure not good right now. It ain't gonna be good this season either, so I ain't got time for that jacked up ass, country bumpkin ass family. Yeah, I'm from a country bumpkin ass family too, but we ain't on TV. And plus, we more entertaining than them motherfuckers is. So with that being said, do not ask me to review that show because I will not be reviewing Dicker Than Water. But what's up, y'all? This is my first video of 2015, as you can see. I ain't got my first haircut of 2015 yet. The last time y'all really seen me on a real video was probably when I did that live show with Justin J, which was something that wasn't really planned. But when y'all saw us out together on pictures, y'all said we need to do a video. And we were just going to hang out. But, you know, every time we get together, y'all seem to want a video from us. So we gave it to y'all. And who knows? Next time we get together, hopefully Adrian is here. Never know. Or Jamar is here. Hopefully we get that together. But let's just get into the video, shall we? Okay, this episode was lukewarm, you know what I'm saying, like, it was hot, but not really hot, it was a little bit, you know, like I said, lukewarm, lukewarm, like it wasn't really all that, but it was better than some of the previous episodes. Let's start off with Nene, um, getting offered three different roles on Broadway. Now, we can say whatever we want to say about this moose-looking ass bitch, but at the end of the day, she do get her coin, and she's always booking the show, and she's always doing something. She's always out here working, and she's using the, um, Real Housewives of Atlanta platform to her fucking advantage. So, I, I can give her kudos for that. However, she has a fucked up ass attitude, which I will be talking about later in the video, but congrats to her for um booking Broadway because who wouldn't want to be on Broadway like you know Broadway is the shit especially for people that's trying to come up in the acting world so you know she had her show on NBC now here she is being a wicked stepmother on Cinderella I think that's um a step in the right direction as far as her acting career is concerned so shout out to um Mop Mop Leaks and her success as an actress now what I don't like is that Greg it seems like ever since Greg and Nene have gotten back together they seem like, like, Greg seems like less of a man. He looks like her damn butler or some shit rather than her husband. You know what I'm saying? Like, every time I see him on screen, it's like he's a butler. Like, he's like he's a gopher or something like that. Like, he's the damn cafeteria lady that can't constantly serve Nene the same old bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just seems like he's a kiss ass and he's all up her ass just because she getting a little bit of change and a little bit of acting roles. That's what I don't really like about that shit, but whatever. It is what it is. Who am I to tell somebody how to run their fucking relationship? So we get into the brokest couple of Atlanta. We get into Cynthia and Peter. And apparently they're looking for a new space for Bar None. They go into this historic black um, neighborhood and they see this little spot. And of course it has to be renovated. I mean, whatever. But Cynthia seems to be very, very happy about the location that they got. Apparently that's where Martin Luther King's body was found. And it's a whole lot of history surrounding the area that they are in. So she's very much excited. Um, when they was at the um, the bar one location that's about to get closed, you know, Cynthia brought up the fact that people were saying that she finances Peter's um, businesses, and she feels like that's that's really not anybody else's business because of the simple fact that it's her husband. So her money is his money. So why can't people see that that same type of you know, that same, when it comes down to candy, why people can't see it that way? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got people like Cynthia talking about his money is my, my money, his money, his money, my money. But when it comes down to candy and time, people are so quick to say that he's a damn gold digger, no matter what the fuck he does. But you know, it is what it is. I'm not, like I said, I'm not here tonight to try to talk about somebody else's relationship. If Cynthia and, and Lou Peter are happy with what the fuck they got, Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? If, if this new location that Bar None is about to get is going to get them some, some great money, some great success, I'm all for it. So, shout out to Cynthia and Lupita. As you can see, I have not been reading Cynthia these last few videos. Hmm. Something is wrong with that picture. So, we get into Candy and Claudia. Claudia comes up to Candy's place of business. They sit down and talk. And she's just trying to get to know Candy just a little bit more. And Candy invites her on the Candy Code and Knight's internet talk show, which is all what all about sex and relationships, which we all know that Candy loves to have a discussion about. So we see that they did the segment and they talked about sex and relationships. And Claudia 
fit right the fuck in. Because that's all the fuck she talks about. She talks about sucking dick. She talks about fucking. She talks about all types of shit. So, I think that Claudia Jordan was a good fit for it, if you ask me. And it was kind of fun. She was kind of fun this episode. She was. She really wasn't that much of a bore this episode. I kind of enjoyed some of her scenes. So, maybe what she got going on later on down the line is, is what we're seeing now. And maybe the reason why she got a peach. I don't know. But I still prefer Portia over Claudia. But on this particular episode, Claudia really wasn't you know what I'm saying, much of a bore to me as she has been these last couple of episodes because these last previous episodes, that bitch was boring as fuck and I didn't see her purpose of being on the show. Right now, that doesn't change my opinion. I still don't see her motherfucking purpose on the show, but she wasn't as boring on this episode so one episode don't change my mind. I still don't see her purpose, but she just wasn't born in this episode. She was quite entertaining. So, um, Phaedra um, and her mama, mm, Regina, is going to this ceremony because Phaedra is receiving an award for being one of the top lawyers in the country. And I want to say kudos to this bitch. You know what I'm saying? First of all, her husband going to prison. Then she looking good. Then she looking like she just got some outside dick. So, that might be why her skin is so sick and why her hair is just straight down the back. You know what I'm saying? Then she getting awards. Despite everything that Phaedra is going through personally, she's still prevailing. And I can really give her a pat on the back for that. You know, she's still getting her award. She's still working. She's doing whatever she can for her damn kids. So, at the end of the day, can't nobody hate on that. So, congrats to Phaedra. The only motherfucking person that I know that she really represented that was worth to, um, a topic was Bobby Brown. But I'm not going to take nothing away from Phaedra. At the end of the day, she got the award. It is what it is. So, let's get to this sixth party. I had to get all that other bullshit out the way because the sex part was really the only thing that I really want to discuss. First of all, you know, it seemed like everybody was fine with getting together. You know, Candy got all the girls together, including some girls that's outside of the RHOA circle. You know what I'm saying? She even invited Demetria, you know what I'm saying, who, were, who we were introduced to last week. So, um, you know what I'm saying? We get to the party. And when Nene comes in, it's like a damn dark cloud just comes just comes in. You know what I'm saying? When Nene brings her big burly ass in. So she comes over and Kenya, you know, under the impression that everything was fine when they left, you know, the tavern last week. She hugs Nene and Nene just like and then you know when Cynthia hugs and she like and that's what the fuck I'm talking about. What was the fucking point of you even inviting them out to the tavern so you can settle our issues and you still going to be a cold hearted bitch to them? What the fuck is wrong with you, Dini? Like, I don't even understand it. You, first of all, you're talking about, I love you, Cynthia. You are my sister. And my dumb ass fell for them damn tears. My dumb ass really fell for them tears and read Cynthia ass for motherfucking feel. Now I see why Cynthia let your motherfucking ass go because you're fucking inconsistent, bitch. How the fuck you going to cry your eyes out and talk to this bitch about how you were so motherfucking hurt about how she just, you know, betrayed you and left you in the motherfucking dust. And then you invite her out again for drinks so you can talk about your issues. And then after the situation, you're talking about y'all can be in the same room. Y'all can be cordial. Y'all just got to work on things piece by piece. Okay, if you're suggesting that you want to work on things piece by piece, then why the fuck aren't you doing so? This bitch see you at a damn party with, this, with the damn inclination. That you guys have gotten to a better place where y'all can be in the same room and y'all can speak, y'all can hug, y'all can talk, at least be cordial. You're not even willing to do that. You are ice cold to these motherfucking women. And not only were you ice cold to Kenya, which I just didn't understand why you even treated Kenya like that. And I don't blame Kenya. Why would she want to kiss your ass to be your motherfucking friend? Because you're not no good friend to nobody. Since you've been on the show, you have done nothing but lose friendships. You're no longer friends with with Sheree, you ain't friends with Lisa, and you're not friends with Deshaun. What the fuck? You ain't friends with Dwight. What's up with that? Now you're not friends with Cynthia. So, I just don't get why you feel like a bitch got to kiss your big burly ass in order to get along with you and be friends with you. Don't nobody got to do that. And just like you didn't have to invite them if you had no intention on making things right with them, what the fuck did you invite them out there for anyway, bitch? I don't understand your logic. If somebody really felt like they wanted to solve their issues and their differences, if you felt like it was going to take a lot of work before you two could be friends, then work on it piece by piece. You're not doing that. 
You just showed how much of a lousy ass bitch you are and why anybody would even want to be your friend. Why would anybody want to be friends with you, Nene, after the way you just treated Cynthia and Kenya at that damn party when they tried to be nice to you and speak to your ass? Then on top of that, Demetrius spoke to you. You was rude to her too. And then when Claudia spoke to you, you was even rude to that bitch. You don't even know her. And I don't even get it. Like, you were being like a big ass submarine burning ass bitch the whole motherfucking episode. I mean, really, what the fuck makes you think that you are so much better than somebody when you got a big reindeer ass nose with some damn donkey teeth and a donkey mouth and then your body is shaped like a damn can of Noxzema? What the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? I don't understand it. I really don't understand you and your logic. You calling these women out only for you to be a bitch to them? Even from what I saw, Portia wasn't even being bitches to them. So I don't even get that. Like, what, what the fuck is wrong with you? Then Claudia tried to pull you to the side and you were still being a bitch. Really, Nene? Then, on top of that, you know, Demetria, who feels the need to constantly say Roger Bob is her man, nobody gives a fuck about that aunt either looking ass nigga being your man, but okay. Only for her to get shut down by the Little Mermaid, who told her ass that she was fucking Roger Bob too. At the same time, Demetria was fucking him. Which put, which brought me right on back to season two of Love and Hip Hop New York, when Kim Bella straight up told Emily B that she was fucking fab three years ago. And three years ago, Emily was pregnant and Chris got up and beat her ass. That was some fuck shit. Now, if the Little Mermaid really felt like there was some information that she that um that this bitch really need to know, she should have put her ass to the side and told her that. But yes, she embarrassed her in front of everybody and had the bitch to walk out the motherfucking door in her humiliation. And the only person that went to go see about her was Cynthia. I just thought it was fucked up how everybody sat there and laughed at that day up girl. After she left and, and threw shots and thought the shit was funny. I didn't think that shit was funny. Even though she looked like a damn fool for claiming somebody who, for eight years who ain't really been claiming her at all. I just felt like that was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like this girl humiliating y'all sitting up here making light of the situation. It's no light to be made of the situation, you guys. Like this bitch just got humiliated in front of motherfuckers that she barely even know. And the only person that cared enough to check on her was Cynthia. I just thought it was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And everything about that party just seems like it was a fucking ambush to come for Demetria. It just felt like Candy and got some information from them other girls about Demetria. And she was like, well, you know, you can come to my party. And then when we get rid of the family and shit, you could tell her that, you know, you fuck Roger Bob as well. Just like the shit when Cynthia brought Natalie in. You know what I'm saying? It just feels like when people be bringing or when Nene brought my Lanta on the motherfucking show to come for Phaedra. It just seemed like it like when people bring these outside people to this damn show. It just make me feel like they doing it for, for scripted ass drama and that's what the fuck it felt like so candy i hope you weren't being messy when you did this party because if you did but that's my review on real housewives of atlanta <coughs> follow me on twitter at mr underscore still standing without the g i've been noticing that a lot of y'all been putting my twitter name is mr still standing with the g and no underscore but it's actually mr underscore still standing with no g at the end my instagram is scotty underscore by underscore nature and my facebook fan page is team scotty just type in team scotty on facebook and then there you go join i'm out of here you guys i will see y'all for my love and hip-hop new york review and i'll be doing one of my favorite segments the rant and i'm out of here you guys Thank <laughs> you.